Candida vaginitis is the topic, and this uh, infection is caused by Candida albicans. And the Candida albicans organism normally colonizes uh, female in uh, a relatively decent percentage, 15 to 20 percent of women who are not pregnant. And in the pregnant population, it's higher, it's about 20 to 40 percent in women who are pregnant in terms of a colonization of this uh, species which does not necessarily lead to infection but can. Now the risk factors for developing the infection are actually very important to remember. Uh, the first one is diabetes. The second one is recent antibiotic use is definitely associated with the candida vaginitis. Pregnancy, like we just talked about, just because the incidence of colonization is much higher. Any type of undergarments that don't allow, uh, essentially, breathing room or breathing space can be a risk factor. Immunosuppression is definitely um, involved. And, for example, we're talking about a person, let's say, has HIV that can of course decrease their immune system and then another one is intrauterine device use which is commonly used as birth control so there's not that many but very important risk factors so if a woman does develop vaginitis infected with candida albicans how will she present well one of the uh, hallmark symptoms is pruritus in the vulvar area. Patient may also complain of burning and also dyspareunia. Dyspareunia of course is pain during sexual intercourse. And perhaps one of the more um, standoutish symptoms uh, or presentations with this on a clinical vignette is the nature of the vaginal discharge. It's described as thick, white, cottage cheese-like. And this is a very strong indicator of a fungal or yeast infection, which is essentially what candida is. Well, the diagnosis involves two main things a wet mount, and vaginal pH. And the vaginal pH is going to be less than 4.5. This is important because in sexually transmitted disease it will be greater than 4.5. So if it's a fungal infection, it will be less than 4.5. The wet mount is also extremely important because it will help you visualize the yeast. And you will see these budding yeast and these hyphae and I'll show you a picture of it. They're very characteristic. You can see that they're really long and then they have these budding areas at the end. Um, this is a, a photo taken of a, a wet mount for a woman who had uh, candida vaginitis. So this is the way it looks. Very characteristic. So the treatment involves essentially antifungals because it's a fungal infection and fluconazole. There are several azoles, but fluconazole is very commonly used oftentimes just as a single dose, 150 milligrams. Now if the patient has recurrences, then you can give long-term therapy with fluconazole, for example, 150 milligrams every week. And if you do that, if she's on long term, then you need to monitor the liver function tests because they can be uh, affected by long term antifungal treatment. Uh, another thing that needs to be uh, looked at if a woman keeps coming back with uh, candida is does she have any risk factors that we are missing? For example, diabetes or does she have uh, some sort of immunosuppression? such as HIV, so that probably should be explored if she's having recurrent candida 
um, infections. Let's take a look at a couple of clinical vignettes. A 19 year old college student comes to the physician because of vaginal irritation and pain with urination for five days. Two weeks ago, she had a strep pharyngitis, which was treated with amoxicillin. She has been sexually active with two partners over the past year. She uses condoms for contraception. Her last menstrual period was one week ago. Temperature is 99, blood pressure is 90. Pelvic exam shows erythema of the vulva and vagina and thick white vaginal discharge. The pH of the discharge is 4. Which of the following is most likely cause of these findings? Well, let's go through all the things. First of all, she was recently treated with an antibiotic, so that's part of the risk factors. The pH is definitely less than 4.5, and she's got this characteristic white discharge. Bacterial vaginosis would actually have a pH that would be greater than uh, 4.5, actually. So the uh, pH would, in this question, would not point to bacterial vaginosis. Chlamydia and Neisseria are sexually transmitted diseases, and she's using condoms, so the clinical vignette doesn't really point toward that. E. coli more commonly presents with uh, urinary tract infections, so this question, without a doubt, is talking about candidiasis, candida vaginitis. And then finally, 25-year-old exercise instructor comes to the office because of another episode of white vaginal discharge. She had four episodes of vaginal candidiasis in the past six months. She is so uncomfortable all day long that she cannot take it anymore. She has not been sexually active in two months. She does not take medications, only wears sanitary napkins during her menstrual period, wears cotton underwear, and changes her clothing immediately after exercise. She has never had a sexually transmitted disease and has never used illicit drugs. Physical exam shows thick white vaginal discharge and an erythematous and edematous vulva. UA is normal, urinary pregnancy test is negative, potassium hydroxide prep of the vaginal discharge shows hyphae and buds. Culture grows candida albicans. You prescribe ketoconazole for 14 days. She returns one month later and says that the symptoms resolve for two weeks but have returned. Her social history is unchanged. Physical and microscopic examinations are the same as the last visit. At this time, you should. Well, this is obviously a case of recurrent uh, infection, recurrent uh, candida vaginitis. So you need to probably uh, explore some of the risk factors. And in this question, she has never used drugs, and she's never had a sexually transmitted disease. So she doesn't seem like the kind of person that would probably be immunocompromised with HIV. So that would probably not be the immediate next step. So I'd probably hold back on that one. Choice A, ask her to stop exercising for one month. Well, that doesn't really take care of the problem because she is using cotton underwear and she's changing her clothes immediately after exercise. So I don't really think it's a question of what she wears when she exercises. So now I left with the last two. Have her contact past sexual partners for evaluation. Well, remember, candida vaginitis is not a sexually transmitted disease, so that really wouldn't help much. So by process of elimination, it's D, but D makes perfect sense because one of the risk factors for recurrent candida vaginitis in a woman is if she has diabetes. Now, she's a bit young for that, but who knows? So it would be uh, appropriate for you to check a blood glucose level and evaluate her if she has diabetes or not.